Hello, one and all, and welcome back to another thrilling episode of Off the Dome. I'm your humble interviewer, Jordan Brown, and with me for the very first time is our shimmering showrunner. Say hi, shimmering showrunner. Hi, shimmering showrunner. My gosh, Paul, thank you so much for joining me. Such an exciting week. We have the first episode of Smarty Pants in the books. We've got the trailer for Thousand Airs two days from now, as of when we're recording this. And obviously, uh, a dropout Emmy season in full swing. Uh, oh my gosh, uh, things went out to the voters today or at some point someone posted on reddit that they had uh, a dropout emmy stuff in their inbox uh, um but before we jump into all of that as a pa on drunk history did you have to buy booze for people oh my god you did your research jeez louise where did you <laughs> even find that i was a pa on drunk history yes it's I on did. your linkedin yeah it's on my linkedin um that was my first comedy job and i was like so excited to get that job and i had been working at a different place that i just was really unhappy at and so they called me to be a pa and i quit my other job day of i gave no notice and i went over <laughs> to drunk history and i was like oh my god this is gonna be incredible and it was really cool to see how everything is made yes i did have to buy booze oh wait actually you know what i think the guests had to provide their own booze because we couldn't use yeah. network money for that and like we reimburse them, but we, I would buy the booze that the host Derek Waters would would imbibe. And then I, you know what else was cool about that job? My favorite part was getting to dr uh, drive the talent to and from the storytelling <laughs> yeah, because we would sometimes can't. shoot in their homes, but sometimes we would stage an Airbnb. And so I would get to like drive around with the comedians as they um, after they did their story. So I got to drive around Paul F. Tompkins, uh, Cameron Esposito, Lauren Lapkus. And when Paul F. Tompkins came and did Dirty Laundry last season, I was like, hey, we've actually met before. He didn't remember, of course. Yeah. So I was like, many, many, many years ago, I was a PA and I drove you to your house. And now I'm directing you on Dirty Laundry and you're having drinks once again. Yeah. It was a beautiful full circle moment. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, as someone who was a PA, um, uh, yeah, they, they don't, it's fair that you don't remember uh, a, a PA. Like there's, there's a lot of us and, and we do very, and especially that night, probably. Especially uh, that but, night. Also, it had been yeah. so many years prior. Of course, right. I remember him and it was very significant for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say I have one small bone to pick with you. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's really like, it's you and I would say Erica Ishii are the biggest problems in my Instagram world, which is sometimes I open your stories in public and I oh, immediately God, have so. to be like, yeah. And I immediately have to be like, oh, like I find it delightful, but if someone is over my shoulder, it probably looks like I'm looking at pornography. Um, You know what? I'm sorry. I love it. I'm sorry if I yeah, ever it's... embarrassed you. <laughs> No, it's it's fine. I, I do wonder, do you have like a set speedo budget uh, uh, set aside? <laughs> no, I, go, I cycle through the same like five pairs of underwear, which for people who are watching this and don't even know what you're talking about, <laughs> what you're talking about is not actually pornographic. It's a comedy oh, no, show. Not at all. Yes. I do things for a comedy show hosted by Oscar Montoya, Mano Agapian, who Dropout Lovers will know and love. They do a drag show here in LA. And I'm one of the pit crew boys for that. So I, I dance around and I prance around in my little underwear sometimes. And it's fun. It's liberating. Who cares? We all have many. I, we all contain multitudes. I genuinely love it. I love when it shows up. It just is periodically. I am at like a comic book store and I'm like, oh, I hope there wasn't a child standing near me as I opened that story. Because um, uh, they I'll might have questions. Posting, maybe I'll start posting like little warnings and i'm like don't click next story yet unless you're not no, it's look it's on me i shouldn't be on my phone in public um i should yeah, enjoy yeah. life right yeah it's your fault um, yeah um you've been with dropout since before dropout existed you you're like uh, uh, uh i mean at this point an og of college humor um you joined in what 2015 as yeah like i mean that's a long time. How did you come to drop out? What was that transition from? Uh, I mean, you're in the comedy world, obviously, and then I, I mean, we can. I guess we can get into the arc of starting at like assistant, really like working your way up uh, uh, through the dropout world. 
It's funny. You're right. I, at this point I, I'm an OG, which still sounds so bizarre to me, but, um, I started in 2015 as an assistant at that time, the company was not even dropout or college humor. It was called big breakfast, which was our TV arm where we would develop projects and pitch them to networks and try to get things on network television, such as Adam ruins everything. We had another series on MTV. Like that was kind of what this branch of the company did. And I got that job because of a producer that I had become friends with on Drunk History. So it was as simple as that. She helped get my resume in the door and I interviewed for it and I got it. And since then, I've kind of just been with the company ever since. Like started off as an assistant, became a coordinator, then a senior coordinator. Then I started writing more. And um, then when we became dropout, I became more involved and more hands-on and I had more creative control over certain things. And it was really like post COVID because then the layoffs happened and I was affected by that. So it was like a year of not really working full-time for the company, but I was still doing like freelance stuff for Game Changer and a lot of our social media. And then when I came back, it was just like, the company had a new vision. We better understood what worked well for us and I don't know. They kept me around. Hey, I feel very lucky every single day. I'm like, I don't even know like how I got so lucky to have the job that I do. It's fun. Well, I People say, are great. Yeah. I will say this, like Kyle Rohrbach and I chatted, I don't know, last week, sometime while he was on break, because uh, he had a glass of wine and he was enjoying his life. Um, and he says that you are a creative mastermind um uh, at dropout it says you solved the gastronauts problem um which obviously i don't know what exactly that means but basically the show only works because of you working out the like original premises back in 2019 that like no longer exist and like moved it all through production um i don't know i don't know if that what he's referring to specifically with that show i do think that everything is so collaborative that it's just like there's a story like that for every person at the company. Like if it weren't for this person's idea to, of how to do X, Y, Z, we wouldn't have been able to like get the show the way that it is. So I appreciate the compliment from Kyle, but he's equally as brilliant. So, and as, as is David and Sam and everyone who works on the things that we make, I'm, yeah, it's a great team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it seems it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's really interesting to see how many people stick around for such a huge amount of time, which feels very unusual at really any level, but especially in entertainment, um, you know, uh, of even like editors, like I, I tried with Eve Hines and she's been there for years and years and years and years and years. Yeah. Um, and it's really cool to see the company, uh, uh, you know, like the talent incubator on screen, but also seemingly off screen of like, you know, like, you move from coordinator to senior coordinator to now showrunner on Smarty Pants, uh, uh, as well as, you know, the creative producer and all kinds of other, a thousand other titles that you hold. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I mean, I think when we set out to make a show, we have the goal of it not only being enjoyable and fun for people to watch, but also for the talent on screen to participate in and also for the crew to work on. Like all around, we want everybody to enjoy themselves and have a good time and to have like a really supportive, fun environment on set. So I'm, I'm happy that that's the case. I think that generally people have a good experience working with us and for us. Eve is incredible. The editors that we have are great. I mean, people, once we find people that we really work well with, we tend to bring them back and keep working with them. And yeah, I'm like really happy with what we've built. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's really incredible. Um, I, it's, it feels weird. Cause I just keep name dropping people and I'm not intending to do that, but like, I talked to TJ as well of like, yeah, know, like another is, person who's been TJ. there. Uh, dumpster. dumpster I, yeah. yeah. Um, um, uh, you know, has been there forever as well. Uh, um, and now has sound mixing. I don't know how you could sound mix on every single show, but Hey, shout out to him. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, uh it's it's very cool to see all of that um to sort of starting to get to see that that, that peak behind the scenes um that i get to for some reason i don't understand uh very much enjoy um uh, it's really yeah, cool I, to like hear you talk about us as though we're like i don't know like we're just ordinary people and then you're like 
call, shouting out these people like, wow, yeah, like E, TJ, like as if they were like known to the world. Myself, I mean, too. Yeah, I feel you like, should be. So, hey, um, uh, like it's still the work you still, do is. Yeah. It's just wild to me, even when like, like someone like will approach me and be like, oh my God, I love Dropout. And I'm like, how do you even know who I am? I'm like, the mo- <laughs> like I don't even know. People know you for holding different swords and asking oh my God. them to I be get named. To even more. In this next coming season, the beast of a season for Make Some Noise. Very exciting. Yeah, um, it's uh, great. Yeah, I'm uh, uh, super excited. Um, yeah, I am. Um, it, it's very funny because, like, those, that kind of thing, like, you come out with the swords and whatnot still feels very much like a like a PA type job. <laughs> um, and obviously, like, you've moved well past that. Uh, um, is it just, like, a deep love of comedy that you're like, oh, this is going to be very funny. I want to be involved in this. For sure. So I perform as well. Like, I do improv um, at UCB and Second City, or I used to at Second City at least. And so whenever I get to do anything on camera, it's just fun for me. I enjoy doing it. And the opportunities are a little fewer now that I'm like more involved in higher level decisions of the show, because it's not like I could ever be on Game Changer because I work on it. And Mm -hmm. it so hinges on players being surprised by stuff. So, and same, and same with other shows. Like I just wouldn't be a good fit for like make some noise, for instance. So like as a contestant, so when little uh, things appear, like, uh, little cameo spots and somebody needs to do it. I'm like, Hey, I'll happily do it. I'll happily like get on stage and hand something to Sam. And he calls me on the show. I think he's like my assistant, Paul. And like, obviously I'm not his real assistant, but it's just fun to like play that part. Yeah. It's not too yeah. different from what That's I do for that drag race. Just a, I'm just yeah. a stage hand. Yeah. And it's also cool that you are getting now more on screen stuff, obviously dirty laundry uh, um, and smarty pants. You're smarty uh, pants. do you have a presentation coming this year or are you just a society member? So good question. Every society member gives a presentation. So everyone in the audience okay. gives a presentation at some point during the season. Um, and I, and I do have one as well. Wonderful. Um, I'm very much looking forward to it. Madly in love with that first episode. Um, yeah, I'm glad you I said that. Just like, I, I, um, as, as someone who has never done, I'd never been part of like the PowerPoint party uh, um, vibe. Um, uh, I still like instantly just like fell in love. Um, That's a show that we had been kicking around for some time. And I'm so happy we finally were able to do it. Originally, it was going to lean a lot more into the PowerPoint party vibe. People in a living room, red solo cups, <laughs> snacks, like in somebody's den, just giving presentations. And then it sort of evolved into the cool like society feel. And we were going to lean a little bit harder into like secret society. And these are the people that kind of control the world from behind the curtain and like there's not quite that level of lore in it anymore. It's just a light touch, but I love what we did with it. I love the set. Caitlin Williams designed it. The library was so beautiful. It was the first time that we had a set that was like a four wall kind of situation. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we had everybody kind of like dress up a little more nicely and everybody came really excited to present and a little nervous. It was like really different from anything else we had done. Because normally we invite players to just come on and like be themselves and not have anything prepared. And this time they had to prepare quite a bit. Yeah. Um, so as showrunner, how mm-hmm. involved in you are like comedians presentations or is it a surprise sort of what they're bringing to the table to you as well? It wasn't a surprise to me. So I collected pitches from them but actually in some cases they would like give me an idea and i would initially you know instantly think it was great i didn't want to be too controlling over the topics um other times they would present me with like a couple of ideas saying hey which one sounds better to you and i would help guide them um but i knew all of them coming in and the i also had oversight on the presentation themselves like the slideshows because the comedians Mm -hmm would kind of write out a little script of what they had in mind for each slide, but then a graphic designer was the person who would actually like go and make it. 
So we had an amazing team of graphic designers who worked on all of these and, and we would have to like look at them again and again and again to make sure there were no typos, to make sure that we cleared all the many, many images yeah. that were in each one. We had so many conversations with legal regarding where we could pull images from, what was licensable, how many seconds of a clip of a movie are we allowed to show? Like there were a lot of, a lot of technical things we needed to get right. Um, and so there weren't really as many surprises for me as I was watching, uh, but everyone else had never seen anyone else's topic. And so they were, they came in fully like blind. Are you bad? I, you're cutting out a little bit for me. Oh no. Well, I, thankfully I think for Which Riverside, is fine. Like, Cause obviously with Riverside, it's recording from both yeah. ends. So like, it'll be fine in, in the edit. Yeah. Uh, just uh, fix it in post. So if there's ever a long pause after you finish saying something, it's because you have frozen a little bit for me. That's, that's the only is, reason why. That's what I suspected. I'm not really no, sure no. what could be behind that. Look, I, it happens a lot. I record on Riverside a lot and just periodically it's like, eh, we're going to freeze a lot today. So it's a mystery to me. Oh boy, this was a bad one. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> oh no. All good. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. I, I like watching that first episode. I did like notice in the credits, the huge amount of credits that had to go to like pictures of, of where all of the images came from and i thought uh, I, when i saw it i was like oh boy that is that seems like a real nightmare to have to clear all of that um uh, uh i very very briefly in my entertainment world um worked in like product placement clearances stuff um uh, and boy yeah what a what a fun job it was of just like calling companies and be like hey not even calling them, but like being like, hey, we have a shirt that has the Coca-Cola logo, but it doesn't say Coca-Cola. Can we use that? And like having to run that up to NBC legal. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, I uh, um, I don't envy that process at all. Um, uh, but I mean, I think, you know, it turned out, the thing that turned out so well with that is how engaging then the presentations are uh, uh, in terms of, you know, like, such cool graphics and uh, images and everything else that came along with it. Yeah, I it was really interesting to learn about that process, to be honest, because it wasn't really something that we had thought about much at the very beginning. And a lot of people chose topics dealing with popular culture or, you know, history. And we obviously need visuals for all those things. And that led to a lot of questions about where can we source photos from? And what is it that we can say about them? Can we, you know, critique them? Do the comedians have to kind of tiptoe around certain things? And thankfully, legal was pretty much on the side of, hey, if something is in the state is in the name of commentary or critique, then you are allowed to talk about them, mention them, depict them. Um, and then we just had to like buy certain images. I mean, it was a whole thing, but. I'm really happy with how all the presentations came out. In some cases it was like, oh, well, I wish we could use this photo, but we can't because it's copyrighted. So we have to use this one instead, but that's all just like legal, boring stuff. The outcome I think came out great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, the first episode was obviously incredible. The trailer was incredible. Uh, um, I've, I, I've seen, you know, like uh, as someone just deep, deep in the dropout community, everywhere uh, uh people so excited about the show uh, um just you know like everyone instantly just like clicks clicked with it uh it seems really really fun um i will say um um i i think also i'm assuming that you shot these in like big batches because obviously like we saw some different folks in the gallery during the different presentations um is it a matter of just like pulling out presentations that you think vibe well together uh, um, and sort of editing them into an episode? How is that process going for you? Yeah, pretty much. It, it was something that we really had to think hard about. I think at the very beginning, we were thinking that we were going to pull presentations from across the different days and group them together, just depending on exactly what you said, whether they worked well together, whether it was a good balance of newer faces with familiar faces and that kind of thing. And then that led to something really uh, tough, which was the audience would be so inconsistent. The group that you see in 
the opening shot would be different from the group that you see at the end. It wouldn't quite make sense to like cut to different audio shot, audience shots of people who are not even there later in the episode. So we decided to keep presentations from within the same group. Easy. And so then it just became a matter of, yeah, just balancing out who from each group goes well together, who thematically we wanted presentations to kind of be different from each other on within any certain episode. We didn't want to that were like too much overlap or anything like that. And then we, we alternated the different days. So the way it, the release order will be, it'll be like an episode from group one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Very cool. Um, yeah, I, um, I, I, I that's, it's super interesting. Cause obviously like you could see like people had moved around, like obviously Grant was in a different spot, very important for Demi's presentation. Um, God, just delightful. Um, uh, um so I had said about the first three, I thought Traps was like the most like interesting. Demi's was the funniest and Vix was the most informative. And it made all of them like instantly. I was, there was none that I was like, oh, this didn't like it, all of them. I was like, they're all different and great ways. Um, so like it really, I think really did like the first episode really lended itself to that idea of like these three pair really well together. Um, and um god god demi's was so funny i, I just know. i can't get over how funny his was the um, cool thing about his in particular was i think his schedule had just really been slammed and he initially had pitched something else entirely and as we came closer to like production he was like i'm so sorry i don't have enough time to do the presentation like i might just have to back out and we were like literally please, what can we do to make this easier for you? Like, we want to keep you in the show. We think you're incredible. We really, really want to have you on. And he was like, well, I have this alternate idea, which I wouldn't have to like research or prep as much because it's already part of my standup. Like I've already done this before at certain other shows. And we were like, well, great. We're open to that. And he's like, this is my topic. And we were like, okay, well, <laughs> let's, uh, let's see. Is that okay? Because uh, it was initially like, I don't know for certain. I think initially, like, the pitch was, char like, cartoon characters who can say the N-word. Like, that was th the title. And we were like, that can be a joke <laughs> in the show, but maybe, like, make it a little more broad to, like, who knows? We don't want to, like, put people, you know, that's a little maybe too far. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, it was so funny. The fact that he chose Grant as his kind of target um, was... I think he just was like, who in this group can I make my white guy for the presentation? And then obviously Grant is the funniest choice and he was sitting right there. That wasn't even on purpose. I think he would have approached Grant no matter where he was sitting. Yeah, yeah. I it, uh, just a huge shout out to, well, first of all, shout out to the editors for that hard cut to make <laughs> it seem like Grant really said it. Um, uh, and uh, uh, also a shout out to Grant for, I think like the next day he posted on Instagram that if Demi hadn't kept cutting him off, he would have made some really great points, just really leaning into it. Uh, 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 so good. Um, yeah, I... Um, are there any presentations uh, that you're really excited about people uh, coming up that people are going to be, you think are really going to uh, uh, click with folks? Yes, there are many. Um, episode two features. And you can just tell me. You can, yeah. I was going to say, like, you just want to say, like, the names of the people. You don't have to give away any of the presentations. Obviously, we know, like, Jess Ross is doing Wrestling is Drag, and we've mm -hmm. seen a few others. Um, that I, I'm really excited about that one from the trailer. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I would say that I'm really excited for people to see Katie's. Um, mm -hmm. Hers ran. I believe so... that is eggs, eggs related. Um... It's eggs related. <laughs> That's not a spoiler. It's in the trailer. It's related to eggs. It ran really long. Like we had to cut that down by so much. Um, but it's just, it's so, so funny. Um, Teo's is really funny. It got everybody pretty much angry and out of their seats. Um, I'm excited for people to see mine, of course. Like I I was like laughing so much at everybody's like it was hard to keep a straight face even as a presenter. Um, because everybody was like doing funny bits and kind of roasting me during the middle of it, and that was really fun. Uh who else? Fumi Abe is a really funny stand-up. He was my same day, and his presentation was very funny as well. 
Yeah, I'm excited for people I'm to see it. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, uh, yeah, I because I, I I do uh, so I do. My life's very weird. I co-host a sh- uh, podcast called The Dropout Drop In, where we just talk about things that happen on Dropout. Um, and my co-host, huge PowerPoint party fan, oh. so it was like, "We're going to do that on like this week." And I was like, "I've never done one, um, but I'll do my best." So it's I really ended up making good. one. It, oh, yeah. it was super fun. Uh, uh, I made uh, uh, truffles are the new bacon enough already, um, uh, and it was it was very fun to do. Um, the other two hosts did like dropout related, and I was like, no, I don't have anything for that. <laughs> All you need is a strong opinion, and that'll guide you. A strong yeah. opinion, a funny insight, a weird theory, boom. That's all you got to do. If it's something that you could talk about naturally, the presentation part will come easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm also, I'm really excited because um, obviously like super loved Vix um, and uh, um, obviously they did like an hour long version, I think of mm-hmm. that with, uh, on a podcast. I'm really excited to go back and listen to that. I have it downloaded, but I have not had time uh, uh, to jump in. Um, it's very fun to find out that like the, some of these ideas have been floating around for a while for these comedians. And they're like, Oh, now I can like get it into an official format uh, with amazing graphics. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. I mean, we were open to that because um, it's an easier lift on them. These are very busy people. We want to have them on the show. So if they already have something that they've been working on and they want to use it for our thing, that's, you know, totally fine. And in the case of Demi and Vic, obviously they were such good, funny presentations and they had so much to say about them because these are things that they had been thinking about for some time. Mm-hmm. So it just added to the strength of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, oh gosh. I know how busy Vic So Vic and I, I don't know if you know this, have, I've accidentally started a podcast with Vic as well. It's very weird. Uh, we record after almost every episode of VIP um, uh, and um truly one of the greatest boons of my life because Vic is so kind and so funny. Um, I know you're on set for VIP. Um, uh, what's it like? What's it like back there on set? Well, Tommy Shrigley is dumping protein powder into Vic Michaelis's face. Like what, how, how do you live through that? Like, so uh, yeah, I'm on set for most of our shows. That one was kind of like, there was no proper showrunner. So it was me and David Kearns just kind of like both present. Now David is kind of stepping into the showrunner role for season two, but it's so funny. We're there. We're there laughing and enjoying ourselves, but at the same time, we're kind of like on on messenger at the same time, kind of conversing between me, him and Tamar um, being like, what should our next, next segment be? Or like, what are things that we can do now seeing how the interview has taken course you know what i mean like mm-hmm. once tommy you know once zach or whoever the talent is has made a certain bold choice what can we now do with that knowledge so we're kind of like acting in real time and making quick decisions in that way one example being ali as pick number two i think it was tomorrow's idea oh why don't we show them pictures of dogs as like a sort of therapy and so Literally, I pulled st- dog photos up on Shutterstock on my laptop, and I was standing right there going one by one as they're looking at the photos of the dogs. So that was actually done practically. It wasn't like done after the fact, much like our green screen stuff. Um, and then the, with the dog at the end, which was David Kearns' dog, uh, we were like talking like, yeah. well, what if we bought a real dog? And then I said to David, like, Hey, like, what if about you go grab your dog? Like you live kind of close. And he's like, oh my God. Okay. Should I, should I, should I? And so he like sped off, drove out, got his dog, came back in time for the end to surprise Allie with it. And so it's, we're kind of like working. Our brains are going at full speed during the interviews, trying to give the interview shape because it's, of course it's improv, but you want, you want highs and lows. You want an arc. You can't just feel like random conversation. And so it's fun, but it's still like work. We're like in work mode. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, 
I know like Vic and I have talked about, you know, like they'll call for something and then they've been like, it just like magically appears just like they bring in a thing. And we talked about that a while ago. My guess is they were thinking about the dog uh, as one of those things of just like, Hey, a dog's on set now, um, which is wild. Um, yeah. I don't remember if we, cause we, we pause and stuff like in between. I don't <laughs> remember if Vic knew that a dog was on the way I, I'm forgetting um, or whether that was a surprise to them. But Vic yeah. does have an awareness more or less of what the props were in the back. We had like miscellaneous all purpose props that could apply to anyone and some that were kind of custom chosen or designed for particular characters that we anticipated might, you know, because we don't know, actually know what the talent is going to pick as their character, but based on their look on their vibe, we just had certain things ready. And so, yeah, Vic would be like, oh, we have a book for you to take a look at and then our PA Corey would like grab it and come through the door as though it had been like planned ahead of time, but it was on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Well, I, I, sh I should say, I know obviously like the Nana book was males. Incredible. Yeah. Um, it was like a makeup uh, palette or something. It wasn't even a book. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I will say, uh, having talked to Tamar and uh, about that episode, uh, that it seems like that one in particular, though, uh, uh, you you all just got to like hang out and watch because uh, Vic and Lisa just like crushed it so hard. You're like, we don't have to pause to tell them like, here's the next arc. They've just got it. Um, yeah, yeah. That one, I think, is the one that had the fewest quote unquote segments. It was just <laughs> kind of like a one shot mono scene um we might have given a graphic treatment for like the story time one like reading from the book i'm not sure but um yeah that was the one that we had to stop and start the least because they just ran with that insane character choice at the top and they just did it yeah yeah i uh absolute magic uh i mean uh, every episode I, i'm so excited to see that show as well of just like how much fun it is um obviously that one was i mean uh, in development of that obviously you had something to go off of hello my name is um um but was uh, is that another one where you're like a long time of like oh we really want to bring back hello my mm -hmm. name is how does it work who do we get in the host chair uh, um how did that come about yeah, so that show, you're right, it was it was inspired by Hello, My Name Is. And then we were going to bring it back. I want to say, like, in early dropout days, we were figuring out how to do it. I think it was going to be called, like, American Person or something, or American Mosaic, something like that. Like, And the idea was going to be meeting ordinary people and learning their stories. Not too different from the version of it that exists now. But I think we were even going to do, like, uh, in the field reporting, here we are at this person's home, or let's take a walk with them through their farm. Or like the, It was like a, a much more complex version. And at the time, I don't think we had anyone in mind for a host. It was just like a very broad strokes idea of the fact we just wanted to do this thing, but it seemed too ambitious to do that full version. And then nothing ever really became of it. And then once Dropout became the version of Dropout that exists now, we we revisited it we like looked back at it and we're like well what can it be what can we be and we were inspired by this kind of like barbara walters style interview with somebody like really funny and quick on their feet as the host vic was just like everyone just agreed that they would make a great choice and there wasn't really any like argument from anyone we were like yeah vic like, we hope that vic wants to do it and Vic wanted to do it, and we're so happy that they did. Um, the set, which we kind of call this Miami-inspired 80s pink stuck-in-time mm -hmm. set, that was Tamar's vision, and it was such a cool choice. I mean, I love the color palette for that set, and we made the makeup area look really cool. Um, yeah, it just really gives it a, a visual, a distinctive like visual language. And yeah, like we chose the characters for it. We didn't really know how prescriptive to be about the the choices. Like if, you know, there's an early version of the treatment for this show where it was like, uh, I almost gave a spoiler, um, <laughs> where it would be like, okay, so Izzy Rollins like mother nature look. So it would be yeah. like, 
oh, what about like mother nature? And she holds this thing and that thing and that thing. And we had like such a intricately detailed point by point look. And we decided to kind of pare back a little bit because if you give somebody so many things, it really locks them in. It doesn't give them much wiggle room to like really make something their own. So what's an example? Like the twins, great. Uh, Casper and Jasper, they're twins. They can decide what that is. But we were going to like give them like, oh, what if it's twins and they're dressed like Tweedledee and Tweedledum and they're both holding this and they're both, and it's like, no, 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 we can't go that far. We really have to give them room to breathe. And so that was a learning, yeah. it was kind of like a learning process as well. And uh, God, Je the choice to become a married couple instead of twins, mm, yeah. oh, so funny. And yeah. so like, like allowing them like th that, like wild choice made it so much better. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I know you all are now in like season two prep, which is very exciting. Uh, um, it's, it's very cool. Uh, um, Kyle and I talked about it. He said seasons two and three and my eyes like lit up like a Christmas tree. And he's like, look, we haven't greenlit season three, just saying like, it's good to be optimistic. Um, uh, Cause, uh, and I was like, yeah, I mean, the show is obviously like, it really like caught on something special. Paul Abdul follows it on Instagram. Like it's a special show. Um, yeah, it's funny to like talk about a season two and three or like, I think internally we all want to make a season three and four and five and six. Yeah. Like we all want that. Um, but we kind of take it one step at a time because we have so many other shows we're juggling at the same time and we need to like be mindful of the response. And thankfully the response to this one has been really, really positive and it's been doing super well on social media, which is a, is a big factor when we consider whether to renew a show or not, just because that's how our company grows. Like that's just how we sustain ourselves is by people discovering us on TikTok and Instagram and stuff. Um, so I hope we make many more seasons. It's so much fun to work on. And we've gotten so many like DMs from people being like, can I be in the next season? <laughs> so they're like, maybe, I don't know. Like we have such limited spots. I hope we get to make a million right. episodes. I mean, what a, what a great problem to have though, right? If like yeah. a bunch of like incredibly talented, famous comedians want to come on our show. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, um, I, I know, like, well, I mean, I, I can tell you Vic has said they want to make it for the rest of their life. So, like, you've got, you've got Vic at least locked down. Um, I, um, uh, yeah, uh, um, yeah, it's such a, such a fun, such a fun, like, God, it's such an impressive show uh, of just, like, watching two, I mean, well, I guess two to three brilliant improvisers just absolutely, like, be comedic forces with each other. Um, uh, uh, would you ever want to get on, get in the chair, get get a get a, a look done? Um, would I want to? Yeah, but my producer brain, the my producer answer is I don't, I'm not a, the best fit for it. I mean, if we make so many that we're like, hey, we really need people to do it. Do you want to do it? I'd be like, yeah. But there are so many people who are more capable than me that deserve it more, and who I want to put ahead of me. Um, also, by the way, shout out to Alex Perone, who is our head makeup artist and leads right. the makeup department, because we yeah. learned on set, like as we were shooting the show, that she had been nominated for an Emmy for her work on, I want to say The Mandalorian. It is The Mandalorian, um, yes. So that was like really cool. We're like, oh my God. And we all got to like clap and applaud her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I chatted with Alex last week as well. Oh, of cool. Like, um, uh, like I think I have, I've talked to more people at Dropout than anyone else in the world at this point. Um, Probably. Like, <laughs> I think you're number 30 uh, uh, in terms of Dropout employees that I have talked to. Um, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Alex, I mean, just like so brilliant. I love also, you know, like I, I talked to Alex about like that transition of uh, Josh Rubin uh, uh, a moment of him under knowing every single thing that like she was doing mm. in terms of makeup and then being like, can we lie to them? And like that process of like, um, what if we try to fool them into what we're doing? Um, I'm curious how that's going to work in season two, uh, especially if anyone comes back of like, they'll know we're trying to lie to them. Um, yeah, it's, it's that's true. But you know yeah. what? It doesn't really, I think it'll still be successful because any person who steps onto the Game Changer set knows that they're about to be tricked mm -hmm. or misled in some way, but knowing that doesn't actually really give them any information.
Yeah. So yeah, and I mean, even with Josh handing him that puppet at the last minute changed everything about that character mm-hmm. um, for the better. My God, the ability to jump between Doctor Milk and Kemp, Kelp, Kelp, um, just Kelp. like Cap. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, like, <laughs> like I mind blown at how fast he was able to just like pop back and forth. Um, yeah, he's truly a wizard. I don't think any of us even realized he was so good at puppeteering. Um, we thought we assumed he would be good at it, but not to the level that he was. Like it was really seamless. Yeah. Uh, do you have any like dream board guests you want to get on? Vic says Barbara Walters um, as a uh, guest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, who would I want to get on? Um, first person I thought of was Kristen Wiig, just because she for a long time oh. was like my comedy idol. So I'll say her. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it look, Wayne it Brady doesn't too. seem, yeah. He was oh, like, God, I have like memories from middle school of being like, oh my gosh, this is one of the most talented people I've ever seen. And so having him come on, make some noise was like crazy. It was yeah. like having, truly not only like, have him on, make some noise, but yeah. saying two pe- two groups have gotten filmed improv done correctly whose line and you did you just want to like walk into the ocean at that point and be like we did it we're done um like no i remember hearing that and i was so flattered it was he said that as soon as he walked in like he walked in and he said hi to sam and it was like one of the first things out of his mouth and we were all like oh my gosh we were in such awe but i was also like oh i wish i had had my bts camera out (laughs) i wish i could have recorded that (laughs) um so yeah that was truly very gratifying and i hope he had a good time doing it it seemed that he did and maybe he'll want to come back and do more stuff with us yeah Uh, it was delight it was such a delightful every bit of that was delightful Uh, um god i I, yeah i think about him and ross doing the beastie boys what uh, so Mm -hmm. much um so good um yeah um uh, um i guess that means are you shooting a lot of the behind the scenes then that we're getting in those like like week after yeah um i basically so on the game changer set i am shooting all the bts so i go around with my little camera kevin stiller shows me how to use it because i don't actually know anything about cameras so he's like just press this this and this so i'm like okay great so i'm going around like getting footage and then i'm also the one interviewing people Mm -hmm. for the sit down interviews for that so whenever you see me talking on there, it's me talking to an empty chair. Actually, no, that's not true. Sometimes a PA will sit there to help me just with eyeline. But I'm just pretending as though somebody's asking me questions because nobody actually is. It's very weird. It's a weird feeling, but <laughs> I don't know how else to really do it. Um, yeah. And it's cool. It's a really cool process. My editor for those is, his name is Wendell Smith. He's great. I'm so happy with um, with how they've been coming out and seeing people excited to like learn more about the process behind some of these episodes. Yeah. I mean, that has to feel good that I think like people's biggest complaint about dropout is the behind the scenes stuff is too short. Um, like mm. people are like, I, I want, I want a 40 minute episode of how deja vu works. Like, yeah, like uh, longer than the original. You yeah. know what's funny is like sometimes I so I'm very present on like the Reddit and the Discord. Like I'm not always actively mm-hmm. talking, but I like browse it, you know, because I like to see what people are saying. And so if somebody if I see that certain questions come up or people are confused about a certain thing, then I'll kind of be kicking myself because I'll be like, oh wait, I didn't really get to talk about that during the BTS, and now I wish I had because I want that thing to be known or like that explanation to be more clear. So I think for future seasons I'll probably make them a little bit longer. I mean, if people really respond well to them i mean i have made a career is not exactly where i'm at on this yet but i have made a weird space on the internet where i'm giving people like the deepest dives imaginable like uh, of like let's talk about dropout for an hour it's very Mm. like very technical stuff uh with like the people who do it um so there's definitely an audience that wants as much as possible um yeah yeah like i literally there was a reddit post like uh, uh, this week, I think, where someone was like, hey, do they have director's commentaries? Because I would join Dropout if they have, like, full director's commentaries for the episodes. Like, <laughs> like, I, someone was like, they have behind the scenes, but not director's commentary. And the person was like, good enough for me. And off they were to subscribe. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's... Yeah. Peop- 
people love it. Um, Good. People I'm glad want to know. Like it. I think yeah. if, I guess if there are things that there are, are still pending where people watch the behind the scenes and they're like, well, I still don't understand this part or that part or how they did this or that, then I could just come on and talk to you. And then that's like the supplementary I, I, yes, <laughs> yeah. behind the scenes to the behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, well, I guess then let's, let's get into it. Was there a plan for if like Siobhan jumped in and stopped uh, uh, Sam from kicking Kevin's camera? Uh, no. You know what, if, if any of them had tried to stop the kicking, maybe Sam, so actually I won't speak for Sam. Maybe he had anticipated that. Maybe he had already talked to Kevin like, oh, drop it anyway or something. I don't know. But as far as I know, no, there was no plan. <laughs> yeah, um, I I was trying to think of any other ones that I've seen and none jump out to me of like a thing Listen, where someone's like- There are so many theories floating around about that episode. And I just want to say- some of the fans are like so observant about every little thing and think that those things have meaning. And oftentimes it breaks my heart. Oftentimes there is no meaning. <laughs> oftentimes Look, it's just, we thought this would be funny to do. Yeah. Um, I, I should apologize to you. Uh, yeah. cause I, I am one of those instigating forces on the internet. Um, I, I don't, I didn't mean, look, it's Sam's fault. Mm -hmm. uh the season five poster broke all of our brains forever because now mm -hmm. we're all looking for like where the swifty in us comes out and we're like we're gonna find mm -hmm. the hidden clues that mm -hmm. will solve all of this um yeah uh, uh when i i was talking to kyle uh, uh we i talked about like the hands thing that sam mm -hmm. does and how that spiraled and he's like look i know about this because of your videos so it's your fault and i was like i didn't come up with a theory i just maybe spread it too far um uh, i can and... see why people would find it suspicious like it's something yeah. that he does it's not really clear why he does it the truth is that with the hands it's sam just kind of putting on like a little shtick as like an old time game show host maybe a little bit inspired by this, like, who am I? There was this character, you know, this evil magician. But I, I saw some people even being more, um, like, was, like they broke it down even further. And they were like, well, if you track when he does it in each episode, it's a little bit later, you know, something like that. But w the episode order isn't determined until after we shoot. So right. that's just random. That's <laughs> yeah. just random. Look the fact that it did line up like that was pretty wild yeah. that like it kept the hand thing kept getting later in the introductions um uh, if, I, I wasn't, I'm, if i didn't know any better yeah i would probably be like oh this must mean something i was super intense yeah. about that with like beyonce's album drops i was like what does it mean <laughs> you posted this picture it must mean something 1159 like i was like tracking all these weird numbers like a conspiracy theorist theorist so mm -hmm. i get it i get it yeah yeah, uh, look, it gets it gets the best of us. Um, uh, yeah, I I will say, yeah. Uh, uh, when I talked to Kyle, he was like, I just don't want people to be upset. Like the finale is great, but I don't want people to be upset that like this this storyline that people have imagined is going to like yeah. come to fruition. Um, yeah, I think people will love the finale, and I love the finale, but it doesn't like tie into the theories that are flowing around around deja vu like our episodes are kind of like yeah they exist in their own worlds basically right yeah i know so many people were like like i mean screaming at me but like everywhere of like jordan he said sam Dal the sam dalton reich and i was like yeah it's his middle name like it's not like he didn't oh, he's not dude. actually time yeah he's not actually time traveling and like changing the like home videos that's that's just his oh my middle God. name imagine it was uh, like some like ai thing where we no <laughs> yeah <laughs> we made his mom say dalton yeah oh such it's like it's so much fun i I've, I've tried to squash it now as best i can and now everyone thinks i'm in on it uh and that uh sam has gotten to me and i'm also trying to fool them um so it's now just that people, now that i know how enthusiastic people are about something like that i mean maybe it's something we'll try to do in the future it's just yeah that would it would take so much planning to do like a season long thing with little clues hidden and, hey yeah and like, closing the door on like, it, but. yeah and, and like remember um it was it must it was is it breaking bad or better call saul where like uh they came out and they're like there's a hint and people instantly were like the first letters of all the episodes spell gus spring is back like they like found it so <laughs> fast um like that's the that's the one issue of like we've left small clues if you tell anyone that like it's solved um because the internet is 
insane. Um, uh, yeah. Um, uh, I will say it's very, very funny that there was that shot that said VFX needed. <laughs> are, you, are you aware of this? Yes. And then it got uploaded again got to uploaded. YouTube. And that truly was just an error. It is now gone. <laughs> It is the that is the funniest episode that that could have happened on because it was so full of these right. other yeah. potential clues and I love that there are people that were like no it's on purpose it's part of the VHS degradation effect and maybe we could have just claimed that to like be like yeah it's on purpose but it was just a mistake yeah we're human oh, beings yeah yeah the, the... The mistake then followed by like re-uploading it and then everyone's like, look, it's been re-uploaded. That means that's that means something because it's deja vu. Like the one episode of like, if you've re-uploaded it, it will mean something special. Yeah, um, it's just a very funny coincidence there was that one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll say like, I, uh, um, God, I made a video talking about it and it did terrible numbers. And I think I know why, but like, anyway, I made a second video where I basically said the exact same thing and it did much better. And I was like, this feels appropriate for mm -hmm. this episode of like, I had to make two videos uh, in order to like reach half of the people that follow me. Um, uh, yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it's been, I, I know we've got um a couple episodes of, of game changers left a game changer left uh got obviously uh beat the buzzer is coming mm -hmm. um and because i've watched other sam interviews uh and then um that final two-parter of completely out of the studio uh um mm -hmm. like 18 camera shoot mm -hmm. uh obviously like huge huge work um i i you know obviously without spoiling anything how good is the finale <laughs> The finale is really, really good. I think it is, the format of it is unlike any other episode of Game Changer. Um, what else can I say about it? I think there's some fun surprises. I think, um, I, can, I can tell you that this is one that we originally planned to make last season. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had to punt it by a year. Yeah. And uh, we were trying to figure out a way to do this on our set, and we couldn't. And so that's why we had to delay it. Yeah. And it was really cool, and we had to, like, literally drive somewhere far to, like, do this thing. Amazing. Yeah, I'm so excited for it. Uh, um, I, I, I also, oh, gosh, when I talked to Sam... He told me, oh man, I don't remember which favorite there's because one of the episodes from this season, I think, is your new favorite. Um, yeah, yeah, mine was Sam Says Three. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, yeah, boy, boy, that was a special episode. Um, uh, like, it's so chock full of funny moment after funny moment after funny moment. Like, I can't believe how much we were able to squeeze into one single episode. It was just so funny. All the running jokes between the cast the like not cursing and that wardrobe and then the bus finale and everything like i just loved it i just loved yeah. that episode you got to be i mean obviously like really hands-on you're keeping track of i mean similar to uh, um uh, bingo you have so much to keep track of uh in terms of like what's happening on set shout out to the real heroes of that episode which were the pas which were helping me with scoring because it's you know every it's everyone's trying to observe any kind of rule break. And so each PA had, it was responsible for one cast member to make sure like they counted the right number of swear words. And then they would run up to me and whisper in my ear, like, uh, Jacob cursed twice. And I would like, are you sure twice? Okay. And then I would tell Sam, Sam, you have to tell Jacob it's minus two points because <laughs> we needed to make sure that these things were all correct. Because if in the edit we discovered, oh, we actually didn't curse twice, then the points would be all messed up. The winner wouldn't have been as fairly determined. Like, so we really needed to be like locked in. Yeah. Yeah. Fully understandable. I also will say like, uh, uh, Vic doesn't rem remember meeting Henry the pig. Um, like, uh, uh, I talked to Vic before the behind the scenes came out and they were like, yeah, I never got to see the pig. Um, uh, and then like, obviously the behind the scenes came out and I'm like, Hey Vic, what's up? And they're like, I genuinely don't remember it at all. They were um, not, they were just on another yeah. plane. Yeah, uh, it, yeah. It, it, I said something to Sam about it, and he was like, "Yeah, I mean, I like." There's like moments where like I like basically black out on set, and like it's gone. Uh, but like, I think that episode in particular, because it was so wild and so t emotionally taxing, uh, um, uh, just like, uh, uh, 
truly so phenomenal. Um, I, I had to go back and rewatch Escape the Green Room because I think Escape the Green Room is still my favorite. But because Sam Says 3 was so good, I had to go back and rewatch to be like, I don't know which one it is. I think it's still Escape the Green Room. But boy, Sam Says 3 is a close second. Um, and yeah. un- understandably in the Emmy consideration. So uh, Escape the Green Room was a huge lift. I mean, our editor, Sam Gear really like brought it to the next level with all those inserts so that you could actually see all of the puzzles close up close up mm-hmm. as they're happening. I think we like really wanted the viewer to be able to follow the action really well. And it wasn't initially very clear what was happening, what these puzzles were, what these clues were that they were supposed to find. We had to trim out a lot of dead air because a lot of it is just them scouring the room and not really doing anything or talking. So it's all, it was only edit. And, yeah. um, yeah, that was super fun. Yeah. Um, well, we have, I, we're well, at the hour. I, I don't want to keep you, but we do have Thousand Airs trailer coming mm-hmm. this week. This won't come out until well after that has aired. So you can, don't worry about if you're like, going to say something about the show. The show to me, based on the two seconds I've seen of it, feels like smarty pants, but with a budget of just like you gave people $1,000 and they get to go out and do something. Is that the general vibe of it? Uh. It's the general vibe, yes, yes. Okay, all right. I, I, it's uh, not that they went out, were able to go out and do something. I, I will speak more freely about this because by now people will have seen the trailer when they're watching this. But, yeah. Um, the premise of it is that we get a group of four together. We have rotating hosts. So Jess Ross is a host of an episode. Ryan Creamer, Erica Ishii. It's a different host every time. And the cast has all been given a budget of $1,000 to prepare a special surprise for the rest of the group. So in studio, they do a variety of activities. And you will see some glimpses of them in the trailer. And oh, it's really cool. I can't wait. That's so much fun. Um, uh, obviously, like, ton of stuff on the way. Uh, uh, Kyle told me, I think, 17 shows in some, like, form of development, um, which is so exciting and wild um uh, just hugest congrats to you of like everything that you, i mean look you're killing it over there we love it uh, um uh, we have a show coming out this summer that we haven't even announced yet and i'm so excited that for people to see it it's a total surprise it's got a lot of great folks in it Amazing. I can't wait. Oh, the scoop of the interview. Uh, a mystery show is coming it's with no mystery. other information. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I love that. Yeah, and obviously, like, Dropout Presents is coming soon. Like, so many fun things. Um, uh, um, all right. If the folks out there want to follow you on social media, where can they find you? Um, you can find me on IG at Paul. Wait, what is my handle? It's at PS Robolino. That's what it is. Yeah. S yes. as in my middle name, Santiago. And then I'm still I'm still on Twitter. A lot of people have left, but I'm still on there, guys, because I like writing jokes and I don't like threads, <laughs> so I'm still using it. But I don't Super call it fair. X. I call it Twitter. Yeah. Um, and that's just my name at Paul Robolino. You can you can if you're watching the dropout behind the scenes, my handle's on there. You can you can you can just search me. You'll find me. Yeah, you'll find it. Paul, thank you so much. This was amazing. Um, uh, I yeah, we're gonna have to do this a million times. Every time people have behind the scenes questions, I'll just message you yeah. to be like, "Hey, gather um, up the oh, questions." I, I got one for you. The yeah. the weenus uh, was the pointing an intentional reference to the uh, video game maze. I watched that video and I sent it to Sam, and we were both like, "I wish we had thought of this." <laughs> so the so the very astute fan who came up with that theory it blew my mind you're brilliant that's a total coincidence <laughs> incredible i thought what it was amazing perfect... yeah. yeah i watched it yeah, and I was like, I... oh my god i wish this was on purpose <laughs> yeah i've been tagged in that video so many times i can't wait to be able to go back and report back now so many people yeah. are like jordan you have to find out i'm like i don't know how to find out i'm not just gonna dm sam randomly to ask him this question um uh, amazing Thank you, Paul, so much. Thank you, Jordan. Absolutely delightful. Uh, I don't know how to end interviews, so I'm just going to hit stop recording.